guys, I have been drilling on this subject matter and researching the crap out of it to try to keep from making any mistakes in my summary of this subject matter. So please bear with me. And if you have any corrections or comments, put those down below because I learn from everyone's input and uh, we all learn and we all grow. So here's the answer to the questions that you clicked on this video to find. <coughs> Let's get started. So, why do we use four ohm speakers in cars and eight ohm speakers typically in homes? Well, it's mainly because of the different power available to the amplifiers in these two environments. Uh, you know, your typical car runs on 12 volts and your home runs on 120. You're looking at, um, you know, a 200 amp draw uh, for over a house, 100 to 200 amps service at your home, whereas my Tahoe has 670 amps available in a, inside the vehicle, but it only has 12 volts, you know, uh, to work with. So those two completely different environments require two completely different solutions to be able to amplify sound in the environments and whenever you're taking in power to an amplifier you're taking in said power you're you're using that power that's coming in adding a component that varies the frequency and produces an ac current coming out that's oscillating at that frequency, alternating at that frequency. So that's how you create the sound, the power to drive your speaker, okay? It's alternating current. Whatever power you're taking in is what you're working with. So if you're taking in a high amount of current and a low voltage, then you're working with that to go through the amplifier. So car amplifiers or DC amplifiers just are completely different machines than what runs on an AC current with very low amount of current and high amount of voltage. I hope that makes sense. So whenever your, your output is going to have higher voltage in a car uh, or higher voltage in a home and lower voltage in a car, it's also going to have higher current in a car and lower uh, current in a home. Having said that, the ohm load of the driver that you need to provide power to uh, needs to be lower so that the lower voltage you're providing it with can still do the same amount of work. And the wiring in that voice coil needs to be heavier and thicker uh, to be able to handle the current that's coming to it to do the job on a car, whereas in a home, it, it's going to be more voltage, less current, so the wire can be much smaller and more of the winds, therefore a higher uh, impedance, okay? And it doesn't matter what the specific number is. It could be 1 ohm, it could be 5 ohms, it could be 20 ohms. It doesn't matter. It's just that you need a higher impedance, or you can use a higher impedance driver with higher voltage and a lower impedance driver with a uh, higher current. And the numbers four ohms and eight ohms is just somewhere we stopped to create a specific uh, measurement, an international, you know, based solid measurement that we can all agree to and, and roll with. And that's how that happened. Now, as time has progressed and technology has gotten better, the shortcomings in the electrical systems that we were using back in the day have mostly been overcome. However, people are resistant to change and so we've kept these uh, basically antiquated uh, your solutions 
around as standards now. And that's why we still have that standard. And of course you can use eight ohm drivers in a car and you can use four ohm drivers in a home because those systems have improved over time. <coughs> now, let's talk about the other thing that you guys are asking about. Does a higher impedance driver sound better than a lower impedance driver? So does the four ohm driver sound worse than an eight ohm driver? Everybody's wondering about that. Does it affect the sound quality? Okay, so y'all go ahead and grab your pitchforks and your torches and I'll be waiting outside the building with my running shoes on. Y'all can chase me down, stab me and burn me and everything will be fine. Then we can all go home and drink some whiskey. How about that? So here we go. The answer is no, but although it doesn't make a difference between those two ohm loads, the impedance of your driver is not a constant. And uh, most people watching this channel will know this as the driver moves more inside of the motor. As this happens, all right? That cone is moving back and forth. Better example. There we go. I don't have a motor. I don't have a motor to put this in. We're gonna pretend my hand is a magnet. Just we gotta pretend this is really a coil. So as that cone is moving inside that magnet, like this, when you move a coil past a magnet, <laughs> it creates electricity. Okay? As it moves past that magnet more, if it moves a little bit, it creates a little bit of electricity. If it moves a lot, it creates more electricity. Well, when you're creating electricity with this and you're sending electricity to it, as that electricity is being created, it tries to go back. It tries to flow back towards the amplifier. And as that electricity is trying to flow back towards the amplifier and the amplifier is trying to push electricity toward it, it is impedance. Not resistance, but impedance. This traffic going this way impedes the traffic going this way. Traffic jam. Okay, here's the thing. As that driver is doing its trick, it's going to change that amount of impedance based on what note it's playing. This is where the fun and interesting stuff starts, guys. <clears throat> so as the speaker goes through its frequency range, at different points during that frequency range, it's going to have more impedance than other points. For example, when the speaker hits its FS, it's frequency that it really wants to move a lot. It's going to have the highest amount of impedance at that point, meaning it's going to create the most resistance to that amplifier. And it's also going to be getting the least amount of power at that point. Now what happens at that point is whatever that frequency is, the inherent mechanical driver is going to be producing that frequency with a much lower uh, amount of power. So it kind of balances itself out. When it comes to subwoofers, it's not as big of a deal because it's a fairly small scale of things to work with and it's easy and simple and it just works itself out like that. As the driver creates more more resistance for the amplifier and gets less power, it also is more happy to move. Okay? But when it comes to smaller drivers, like this guy, there's lots of points where things will cause those, those nuances to happen where you'll have more and less cone movement and those resistance values or those impedance values will fluctuate up and down in variable different ways. This is why 
one speaker will sound different, or one of the reasons that one speaker will sound different from another one, because of, okay, you play one speaker and it sounds more honky. You play another speaker and it sounds more tinny. This speaker doesn't have as much bass output. This speaker has lots of bass output. Right? The reasons for those things, well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons for those things is as that frequency range of those two drivers goes up, at different points, you're going to have more and less impedance. And therefore, the tone that's playing at that point is going to be louder than over here. So this speaker may, may at, you know, uh, say one kilohertz, uh, 1000 hertz, this speaker may have a fairly low impedance at that point, which means it's going to be really producing a lot more sound. Whereas this speaker may have a higher impedance at one kilohertz. And so you're going to hear more 1K out of this speaker than you will out of this speaker. That will cause drastic differences from driver to driver. That's also one of the things that people look at whenever they're building mechanical passive crossovers for a driver to work with another driver is what weaknesses do they have and can we overlap and fix those weaknesses? All of these things are what sound engineers have to struggle with whenever they're building high-end systems because these variables are crazy. So not only do you have the physical mass of the driver and all the different elements in there, but you also have those elliptical issues that come up. And then you have to match up this speaker's uh, needs with an unknown amplifier. So if you don't know what amplifier or how that amplifier is going to work, one amplifier may work better with one speaker than it does with another and vice versa because of this reason. Um, so does the different ohm loads affect the sound quality? Yes, but it doesn't really matter whether it's four ohms or eight ohms as measured uh, with a DC current. It's more about how what what impedance it shows at different frequencies causing the power level going to that speaker to drop and so forth and so on and so it's a lot more nuanced um, and yes so there's your answer <laughs> um, guys I hope this was helpful I know it was long-winded but there was really no way I could put this into words in a more comprehensive way um, my brain just doesn't work like that and I've done the best I can to compile this in such a way to make it more edible and I am prepared with my shield and both my shields to block the torches and the pitchforks uh, in the comments so <laughs> but as a side note I'm always very happy to receive good positive or negative feedback as long as it's something constructive you know be constructive with your comments if you have negative feedback to give just do it in a constructive manner say this is what you did wrong this is how you could have done it better or this is where you were incorrect this is the correct thing and if you're making a statement you know give me a source or explain why you think that or, or where you get that information at i am merely a communicator i am not an electrical engineer I am just trying to summarize information and reprocess it and, and, and give it to you guys in such a way that it's more edible, like a mama bird. I'm regurgitating the stuff so it's easy to digest. And you're all cheaping at me and I'm giving you the stuff. So go to sleep, your bellies are full. <laughs> Peace, guys.